Have you ever tried to set up a plan for getting things done using traditional advice and things fell apart before they even got started? Or maybe you tried to set a schedule to get organized using conventional ways and that didn't work either. If so, I might have an approach that can help you. My type B personality and ADHD have never jived well together with traditional self-discipline routines and trying to run everything through a calendar felt like getting a root canal. A few months ago, I came across a video from Elizabeth Phillips and it planted the seed in my brain. Elizabeth is a medical student, Ali Abdal's former assistant, an artist, and a YouTuber who makes videos on many subjects, including productivity. To the best of my knowledge, she has never said she has ADHD, but a lot of people who do totally agree with her methods and say in the comments that her videos have helped tremendously. Much of her advice is not neurotypically focused. Her video, You're Not Lazy, How to Live a Chaotically Organized Life, really resonated with me because neither of us use artificial deadlines because they aren't real enough, nor do we rely on habits or daily consistency. Elizabeth leverages her interest to be enthusiastic and motivated on her schedule so that when she fell behind, she not only caught up, but then got ahead. She ended up surpassing what she would have done from only being consistent. Those of us with ADHD can accomplish ungodly amounts of work when we're in the zone. When we're not in the zone, let's just say not so much. I found that the key is to use this ability and our competitive advantage to our advantage. Instead of just working down a to-do list, which sounds excruciating, Take a look at the method I've developed inspired by Elizabeth Phillips and Dwight D. Eisenhower. This method has two parts and the first part has two options. Part one involves planning and part two involves doing. The first part involves breaking down your to-do list into categories. The initial way that I tried doing this was using the classic Eisenhower matrix. Named after the 34th president of the United States, this approach aims to group activities into four quadrants based on their urgency and importance. If something is both important and urgent, it goes into quadrant one. Important but non-urgent things go into quadrant two. Non-important but urgent things go into quadrant three, while non-important and non-urgent things land in quadrant four. Categorizing activities this way produced somewhat reliable results but I needed a way to further streamline this process. And that brings us to option two. I felt I could simplify things further and ended up only needing two categories. My two groupings are negotiables and non-negotiables. Non-negotiables can include things like tasks with hard deadlines. Perhaps there are meetings which would be difficult or impractical to reschedule. Important appointments fall into this category. Negotiables are essentially everything else that you want or need to get done, but you have flexibility in doing them. I like to call this a pool of potential activities. There are certain times of day when my creativity and enthusiasm are going to peak. If I use that leverage to complete those things during those times, I'm able to accomplish even more in a shorter amount of time than if I just trudge down a to-do list. Let's take a look at a simplified, quick example of this method in action. Let's say that for a specific day, I have the following things to do. Go into the office, write a blog post, edit a YouTube video, and start an art project. I set going to the office as a non-negotiable. Sure, I may have some leeway, but people are counting on me there, so I consider it set. I have flexibility with the other three items, so they go in the negotiables column. This is a planning part, but part two is where the magic happens. Part two. Once all of my to-do list is separated into negotiables and non-negotiables, I then use leverage to pick out which project or activity that I want to work on. This has been a huge game changer for me. 
I used to take significantly longer to accomplish tasks, that is, if I got them done in the first place. That feeling of dreading doing something is at least partially replaced with the ability to pick and choose what I want to work on at any given time. Going back to my previous example, there are some times when writing a blog post is the last thing that I want to do. But if I wait a few hours, then the words sometimes fly out with little to no effort. If I wrote when I didn't want to, then the time to do it would be at least tripled and the quality would have been awful and I'd have to spend a lot of time on revisions. But it's not only the time and quality involved, it's the fact that I get even more done within that shorter time frame, so it's a triple whammy. It's similar to Elizabeth's fall behind, catch up, get ahead approach. I even feel able to bounce back and forth between activities without having difficulty. Lengthy context switching is a thing of the past. Context switching is when we shift our attention between different tasks, apps, or projects. It's considered to be harmful to productivity and can lead to even more stress. However, when I pick and choose from my negotiables list, I may have that initial quote-unquote shifting of gears, but I'm able to get up and running on the next thing relatively easily. It's all about using leverage and your inertia to move the ball forward. I hope that this helps out some of you who may have similar issues, and remember that there's no one-size-fits-all, so definitely experiment and find out what works best for you.